<laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Hi. Everyone. Welcome to another episode of Through the Web with me, your co-host Tosif. And me, to go go. Who is, is without a license. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, yeah, we were just talking earlier about um, the watch later part of YouTube. Yes. Uh, how you uh, can save videos to watch later. Turns out I filled mine, and the the limit is five thousand nine hundred ninety nine videos. That's new information to me. I had no idea that you could fill that. Yeah, it's it's bizarre to me. Like we're just saying, why is there a limit to that? Like my thinking is, it doesn't take up that much data to just have that state. Saying how many Just your way around it, get another <laughs> account. I've, I've actually it manually up. made another watch later. And I'm really? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So, but but do you go back and watch them? I do. So I I, I slowly. And then do you take them away from the list? I do. I do. Okay. So it's kind of like at the top filling up. Right. The overflow is going. But let's find out what's your uh, very first watch later. Like go oh, to the oldest okay, one. Okay. Okay. That's a good. Actually, four thousand nine hundred ninety nine, not five. Oh, okay. Um, so let's see. So okay, it's actually um, Andy Lagrange live performance wherever. For when? When's that from? Let's let's have a look. Let me, let me check mine while while we're at it. Eleven years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. Um. But strangely, I've got videos from fourteen years ago. Hang on, let me. Okay, I'm on eighteen hundred thirty. Okay, so you got a while so to go. So I've got, I've got a fair bit of time. Um, date added oldest. I hope it's nothing embarrassing. <laughs> it's loading. It's um, <laughs> it's a video of a referee on difficulties faced by referees. <laughs> it's a nine minute video. Um, and then the next one is Does the Universe Have a Purpose by um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, okay. Very, <laughs> very, very big jump from <laughs> referees talking about their problems to scientists <laughs> talking about the world's problems. Interesting. But that the first video for, was from 2008. So there you go. Just what, 14 mm -hmm. years? Wow. wow. Almost 15 now. It's crazy how much yeah. time I've spent on, on YouTube. Yeah. Like I remember, um, you know, when you started seeing comments that were 10 years old on yeah. YouTube, but that was like. This, it was just surreal. It's like this website that we always kind of felt was new and yeah. developing just had like just aging comments that are just there for all time. I in fact got a few replies to comments like a few days ago from like really old videos. So do I. Um, and somebody just said, hey man, are you still around? <laughs> <laughs> like just checking in, like yeah. you're still alive and out there. And and I see a lot of conversations like that happening, you know, yeah. like with people. And it's, it's, it is quite weird when you think about it and you're on a, on a whole, you know, internet universe perspective where it's, you know, there are people who've passed on, there are new people joining in every day. There's like legacy of like someone's comments, someone talking about their, you know, loved ones, someone talking about their mm. love lost ones. It's, it's pretty wild yeah. when you think about it from that yeah. perspective and how it's just there. It's, it's like there an artifact. Yeah. yeah. Um, I occasionally I always get comments from stuff I wrote like 13 years, 14 years ago, and I'm, I cringe at it. But then people are like, oh, confusion. Like, I know. And it's like, do you have damn. anything? Because it, would it be like d deleting a Twitter post um, that might be potentially problematic? Do you have any comments? No, like not, that not really. It's just dumb things. Like, <laughs> sometimes, uh, I don't know, like a lot of them from college humor. I don't oh, you remember yes. them? Yeah, like I used to watch them a lot. Same, oh, no, people same. People are probably going to go and search for my comments. Now. <laughs> but yeah, I used to just type really stupid stuff. Like, you know, I was, I was how old? Like 18 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. This um, would be funny. This would be hilarious. Hey? This would be funny as. Yeah. I, I actually watched a video on the downfall of them. And it's yeah, quite sad because like they were like one of the seminal, like Donald Glover, Glover came from. Oh, them. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was oh, from wait. SNL. Sorry, no. I don't think he did hear from there. Or was it Derek Comedy? Okay, there was there was an early there was an early YouTube um, comedy group where he was part of it. So I saw him there first before mm. anything, and then um, I saw him on Community and yeah, yeah. yeah. So Community is um, coming back, by the way. Really? With a movie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a movie. Yeah, because okay, you know they they had the whole thing, um, six seasons and a movie, like this whole movement that they had. Within the, within the show itself, there was like this oh, running, running it's thing. It's been a long but, time since I've seen it. Right, yeah, yeah. same. Um, but yeah, they're fulfilling that that thing. So the whole or original cast is coming back okay. and uh, doing, doing a full movie. So. I, 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 you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope it's not, you know, they always come back yeah, and of, redo things. Yeah, they kind of fell as well. Yeah, no, because I think the writers changed Left. or something or like, yeah. So I, I, re happened. I really found the, the, the older 
white gentleman who used to be like openly racist. He was hilarious. What was his name again? Um, uh, I don't remember. Um, his face is there. But yeah, of course. Yeah. At, the, at the glasses <laughs> and the white balding head. Yeah, but he, he, was, he was hilarious. Funny, yeah. He was hilarious. He was just like so off like kilter all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, how was your week and uh, what did you watch, yeah. if anything, um, interesting? Uh, didn't watch anything in particular, but I did follow um, Dreams Face Reveal. I don't know if you know about uh, that. Yes, that's uh, did, well, you can't so, miss it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So your, my question to you: Did you know about him before all this, all this stuff? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I never watched him, but Same. you know how you have like commentary channels that talk about other YouTubers and right. stuff. So I knew all of his controversies. Yeah. So I didn't, oh, I didn't know he had controversies. Anyway. Yeah. Um, apparently, he keeps apologizing i think that's his problem so i think he made some some like rape. it's a good controversy to have he just keeps <laughs> no, saying no, sorry but like is he, it canadian <laughs> probably but like i think yeah i might be getting this wrong but i think he made like some tweets that were a bit right. like spicy like a few like maybe a decade ago and he got called out for it and then he like made some apology video or something and went badly right, but okay. yeah so i've only known about that side and like some maybe cheating scandal or something in oh, minecraft wow. but that's sure. about it I just right. know he's a big Minecraft guy. Yeah, so I actually didn't really hear about him until a few months ago when, um, you know, Colin and Samir, they talk about other creators as well. In their podcast, they mentioned how they went to this, um, some sort of summit. And I think the Dream SMP is the, the Minecraft group. Um, and they said that when they were in that video event or video conference, uh, they saw fandom like that reminded them of the Beatles. The, the kids and the teenagers were like going absolutely ballistic. Um, and, and that this was the same, I think it was, it was, not, it, it was the, the vid summit. Was this the vid summit? The, you know, you know, but the VidCon, are you talking VidCon, about? VidCon, right. And this year, as we talked about in earlier, that it was done by uh, TikTok. So they're also talking about how TikTokers didn't really have many people coming yeah. in, but in contrast, his booth or their booth was, I don't know how they would have done it with all yeah, the face reveal. Thinking, maybe he was just there. No he was just knew. there, nobody knew or something like that. But yeah, overall, that's when was the first time I heard about it. And then um, just right before the, the face reveal is just trending everywhere. And the YouTube whole marketing- even like, yeah, tweeted about it and stuff. Yeah, so. and, and the whole marketing aspect of it, like, you know, he first, you know, revealed himself to, other creators who then you know, reacted and posted their video of that. Um, and overall, just the, he was trending on, on Twitter for like days. He had more hits than any political kind of issue happening at the time. Um, I think was it had a million and a half concurrent viewers and now I think it's sitting at over 26 or number one gaming. Like it's incredible to mm. think the influence and it's not a, a, a legacy YouTuber either. Mm. Um, the fact that he's, only, he's got, you know, he's a young, dude with like 30 million mm. subscribers is, is actually incredible to think about yeah. uh, and the influence that you might have um, with it. But also on that note, it was a bit sad to see the reason behind why he was revealing his face. Okay, that I didn't know. Right, so basically in the video, it was a short video that he released, but the video itself where he talks about the fact that there were many people who were trying to find out who he was. So the so thing is, like I actually and, saw, um, that side of it, like this was like a year ago or mm. more where people would, there was a big press at one time, like a big push to try and find out who he was. And then there was a picture of this guy floating around, like he was a bigger kid who was like sitting on some steps or something. And everyone like was like, this is dream. Like, right. And it just, you know, that was for a while, that's, everyone thought that that was dream. But the funny thing is it kind of does look like him, except if he was younger and a bit bigger. Oh, really? So okay. um, it may be, but. I haven't seen that photo, okay. but yeah, but the fact that was, you know, that it was getting too much for him to handle where FBI got involved and called him and said, you've got, you know, somebody, like you've got your life is in danger kind of situation. Um, and also I think for personal reasons where he felt that, you know, he couldn't really hang out with other friends within the Minecraft circle without revealing his face or, right. because when you've got that much influence, if you yeah. reveal yourself, that's it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no other option. But so yeah, that that is kind of sad. Like on the topic of, you know, crazies, like stalking and that kind of thing on, you know, with a fan Internet, base, a large yeah. fan base. So we, um, so I actually went to a, a, um, a VidCon myself in Melbourne uh, a few years back. And do you know um, Mighty Car Mods? Yeah, I do yeah. actually. So he, he was one of the speakers there mm -hmm. and he was just talking about, you know, how it is to have a fan base and just how you don't really sign up for it. Like you get people coming to you with like, you know, all their deepest personal mm. issues and saying like, you know, it could be positive, like saying you like make my life better, 
I, I love watching your videos and it makes my day all the, all the way to like, you know, what should I do? Like I'm desperate and like, you know, you're not qualified to answer these questions. And then he touched on also the fact that, you know, you can get people, like he had people come to his house and all of this kind of stuff and dox him. Yeah. And he was just saying, you know, I think at the time he had, Three million or f- maybe five million. It was like even one percent of those people who are just crazy. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah, that that kind of stuck with me. It's like, yeah, like you know, having thirty million subscribers, you just need a small portion who are just a little like off hinge, and like, it's a lot of people, you know, that can. And many creators it. stop creating because of that. I think Roman Atwood, who's like a huge vlogger at the time, had people coming, showing up to his place and or, or doxing his address and stuff like that. And I think Philip DeFranco even had someone break yeah, in on the show. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and yeah, and especially he covers a lot of controversial topics as well. So the fact that, you know, I think there was one, some death threats sent to him directly for covering specific toys. It's crazy when mm. you think about it. It's like, yeah. Um, so I think people kind of sharing some of the uh, personal stories about themselves too is probably on the, on the, the minor <laughs> yeah. uh, inconveniences yeah. compared to some of these these um, crazy crazy end, but yeah. So that that was the the only thing I kind of followed um, deeply. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that I watched. Um, mm. But did you watch anything from your watch later list? Yes, I did. Um, just one of them. Uh, it was this guy who made um, Mario in a you know two point five D look. So it was like fully three D, no, well like as in three D assets and all this, but you're like kind of running along a, mm. a path like this. But the thing was it was made in Unreal Engine five. It looks beautiful. Um and he modeled Chris, like Chris Pratt as Mario. What? <laughs> so it was like really funny. But the thing was um yeah he made it really quickly and in the description it's like I have zero video game experience. I just made this with Unreal Engine 5. And it's like that's the thing. That's the cool thing. Like it's like anybody can Yeah, usually it'll take because the way it looks, it would be like, this is a AAA game, like Nintendo's re-releasing Mario. Except I'd have to say, like, the jumping was, animation was a bit weird. Because I didn't know that, that it was like an indie guy at first. And I was like, Nintendo's doing another Mario, oh, wow. like starring Chris That's Pratt. That's how good that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, why is he, like, looking like he's getting dragged along the floor a little bit when he jumps? Like, the, the, I hope this is like a beta or something. But then... um. I saw that, okay, it's just like an amateur guy, like one single guy. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, that's crazy. But like, yeah, if you touched up the animations, you would have no idea. You would think wow. like, oh, Nintendo released this. But that's the cool thing. It's like, yeah, I think Unreal Engine 5 just, I've said it so many times, it just so, opens up. Um, is it would be something like a software that anybody can access? It's free. Right. It's literally free. So you just need to learn some of the basics and you'd be able to create stuff because I've seen some of the the videos off of it and um, yeah, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, um, like if you can play around with it nicely. Yeah, so you know, if I had time, I'd look into it. I'd love to just do some stuff. Like I, I could even use it for videos and whatever, just making. Yeah, it and I think some people use Blender for the more static kind mm. of stuff. I don't know if you can do do motion graphics on that, but um, no idea. Motion yeah. animation, but um, yeah, uh, but you mentioned Chris Pratt was modeled. As yes. Mario, so that's yeah. Just to think about it, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know how that looks. So I'll have to <laughs> look it up. Um, I'm sure he would have like issues with um, if you know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know how that works. I don't know even how that he did it. I don't know if it was like just. <laughs> yeah, I have to look at it. but it's funny because that kind of ties in with with one of our stories this okay. week. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've been following, but uh, Bruce Willis apparently oh, yeah, had a whole. This, yeah fiasco with with deep fake licensing so first the news came out that bruce willis you know is a big hollywood actor veteran in the in the industry um had sold his likeness to a, a deep fake company for them to use it in uh future movies or advertisements or in any commercial purposes that was the news that came out initially and the reason being is that he um he's diagnosed with aphasia uh, aph- aphasia aphasia um do correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, I think I've I think heard it's the word, but I don't know what that is. Right, actually. so um, aphasia is a language disorder caused by damage in a specific area oh, of the brain right, yeah. that controls um, language, expression, and, and comprehension. Um, so, so just a, a, a quick side note, aphasia is actually the name of a band that I used to Oh, like really? Uh, that's school. how you know it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know a band that's called Severe Dementia. So, oh, okay. And it's Bangladeshi as well. Oh, interesting. Black metal, so. <laughs> but uh, overall, um, yeah. So Bruce Willis, uh, Bruce Willis was um, was diagnosed with it, and essentially that means he's retired from acting. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea behind it, you know, of course, that if you sell your likeness to a deepfake company, means that you could 
use, you know, for future uh, commercial purposes, which was actually the case last year where a Russian uh, telecom company used another company called Deep Cake. So Deep Cake makes deep fakes. <laughs> and they, uh, I think there was the third party who was involved in making that likeness of Bruce Willis to help him recreate for like a digital clone for um, the Russian advert. Now, however the news broke out, uh, the idea was that apparently this company, Deep Cake, had la- the full rights to to use him for future projects and stuff like that. Um, and, and Deep Cake's been using him on the website as well, you know, just regularly. But then Bruce Willis, like, you know, PR came out, agent came out saying that he has no partnership or agreement with this with this company. Um, and overall, it just became like this, you know, this, this weird kind of situation where just lots of more credible companies were saying initially that he had sold it, but then his agent came out and said, no, we, we, we hadn't, right? Um, but this kind of goes into a deeper understanding of, of what the artificial, in, artificial intelligence can do, you know, for, you know, like the, the creating realistic videos that we've, we've talked about in the past, but also the fact that anybody can do that. And how do you even track that? It's almost like, you know, I could just create a Photoshop of any celebrity and post it up mm. on, on, online. Um, there are plenty of people who are kind of against this kind of, this kind of technology. Um, how, how do you see that in the future going ahead with more and more, you know, like things like Unreal Engine and mash it up with deep fakes. And you could basically have a full on movie mm. with anyone in the world that you like, right? Yeah. Um, how, what I do you do to stop like the it, wrong use of it? Well, it, it's, it could just be the same model or framework or scaffolding as a DMCA takedown on YouTube where it's like this is copyright, like your face is the copyright. And if people are using that for profit or if they're using that in a way that takes away viewership or revenue from the original, Mm -hmm. then you just say, well, cease and desist. I mean, technically it's not even original, right? I mean, it's not even um, a copy. I I, I, I understand, understand, but the thing is like, it's just, you can't have that, you can't have Mickey Mouse, you can't have this face, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like, that's the only way I see it working, right? Where we just have the existing system and kind of expand it to include this. Otherwise, it's just going to be whack a mole, or you know, there's nothing you can really do. What so. do you think of the idea in general? Do you think it should be like you know, like some people are completely against it because it'll take away "quote unquote" jobs from actors and and stuff oh, like that. Well, so the thing is, like, yeah, it can have positive and negative uses, obviously. So, like, you know, obviously, when deep fakes first came out, we all know what that <laughs> was initially used for, um, but. Yeah, so some actors obviously, understandably, would be very against that. Mm. Um, But in terms of taking away acting roles, um, I would assume that the actor in question would have a legal standing to say, Mm. I don't accept this being used in a film, like my face likeness in AI form being used in any film. I think that's... It's kind of logical. Mm. Um, so I don't see it as necessarily a bad thing as long as there's rules in place to protect those who could be disadvantaged by it. Not saying that actors are disadvantaged, but you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, I guess something we've discussed in the past as well is, is how do you stop then the propaganda and stuff like that? And That's the hard one. Yeah. Um, but then obviously uh, early on when we first saw deep fakes, then we saw the first like anti-deep fake, deep Deep, deep fake <laughs> system and then like yeah they've gotten better and better um and yeah so like i guess the only option is because eventually humans aren't going to be able to tell we just have to create ai that's good enough to be able to recognize um the fakes but the, the funny thing is when i first mentioned this in the video um i, I don't know if you know what a general adversarial network is generative um, adversarial oh. so it's like when you have two ais that are training against each other so one tries to fool the other one and the other one gets better at telling if something's true or false and they kind of, you know, uh, go up together. So people were saying if you have like a AI generated um, image that's fake and you keep generating fake images and you have one that's detecting if they're fake or not, then you're creating like this big network that, (laughs) that just gets better at, better at um, making fake images. But then I argue that they're not actually connected. They're not talking to each other. So it's not really a thing, but yeah, I think, um, that's the way to do it because eventually they're going to be so realistic that you look at something and you have no idea if it's mm. true or fake. So we just have to get something that can pixel peep and know the patterns of what other AIs do to fake images. So, 
So yeah, and I think a part of it is also education about the internet. Um, this is something, you know, we've kind of, we were born into the internet for so many of the generations that are coming up now. Like they're literally born to the internet for us. We kind of were molded into it. Um, but at least we've built a fair bit of awareness because, you know, we caught it earlier on. Obviously you've got the generations uh, before us who sometimes struggle, <laughs> get scammed and who sometimes struggle. I mean, even we get scammed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so it, it, I think, but, but for none of us, even the generations that are coming now, there has been a one-on-one -on -one internet or internet one-on-one -on -one where um, right. understanding, okay, like how do you decipher from what is, you know, fake or, or how do you know what's a credible place to go to get the right source of information? And I guess then there will be questions about, oh, then who gets to decide what's what's yeah. right and who's yeah. who's teaching this kind of stuff, yeah. indoctrinating the next generation. Yeah. So just so I think it's, it's a it's a question between what do you do to just leave people as is and for them to fight over and and and, and decide yeah, what's and this, right or I wrong. Think this or? Is, we we did have a discussion about this and we kind of defer. Um, I, I was kind of not completely, but leaning towards the side of just let people yeah let people decide for themselves. But obviously. Um, there's some very strong pulls in certain directions that look like good ideas from the outside, but end up with very bad outcomes when people go down those rabbit holes. So um, it's hard. It's a very hard thing. And I guess when you're, you know, you're adding into the mix deep fakes and exactly. things that, like I've seen a couple of things on Twitter lately that have been um, deep faked or, um, yeah, changed around or edited. And it's like this, you know, it's it's almost there. It looks like this could just be, the original source material. Mm. A lot of people in the comments are getting fooled. So it's like, yeah. Um, uh, and not even not even just for the deep fakes, but for like just text. I saw a tweet yesterday talking about Nancy Pelosi, how she bought um, like the, the ticker symbol, like uh, weed, just before Joe Biden announced <laughs> that they were going to. Did uh, she? Uh, yeah. So they said like they, she bought like uh, 10 million shares and now the price is up 28%. Is this legit or? And, and the yeah. thing is like, there was no context. So everyone was like, oh, oh my goodness, insider trading, blah, blah, blah. And people were like, this, is, this isn't real. And it's like, you know, the person who posted that, it's not a great idea to just let, like put that out there right. knowing that it's not real. Um, because the, the thing is like Nancy Pelosi was kind of done, her and her husband, I'm pretty sure, were done for insider trading mm. like a while ago or at least it was exposed and there was actually a, a Twitter page that was tracking her trades for a while. Um, yeah, and the thing is like, so that there was a bit of truth to that, you know, it's in the mm. ballpark, but that's completely fake. And it's yeah. like, if you don't know, you don't know, it's hard, mm. like, yeah, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is, it is tough one, but speaking on about Twitter itself, uh, now you can apparently edit your tweets if you're a Twitter page? blue. Yeah, yeah if you're yeah. Twitter blue, um, but they are planning to roll out to everyone soon. Um, so what's the point of Twitter Blue? <laughs> I think it's just testing it out. Um, oh, it, because, because with Twitter Blue, you get other perks. Oh, okay, anyway. okay, sure. Um, and it's like, what, $3 a month or something? Um, so you get other things, but I think they're testing it out, at least with the Twitter Blue, where you can edit tweets. So I don't know, should be... Would you pay extra to be able to edit tweets? No. no? I, I should tweet more. <laughs> I don't really tweet that much, so... Um, that I'd Maybe then you'd, you'd consider. Yeah, maybe then. But one other change that also that was more interesting was how they now have a video feed almost. <laughs> so they, 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 <laughs> they have a tweet, like Twitter, TikTok clone-ish, <laughs> where well, apparently yeah. you start... No, so you basically, when you click on a video, it almost looks like a full page video thing as well. And then you start, you can, does that work on yours? No? Yeah. No? No? It's not rolled out to me yet. Okay. But that's what it's supposed to be like, where you can start kind of go looking at other potential similar videos as well. You know, and apparently it's been very seamless for a lot of people. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Mm. Kind of dangerous for me because I'm, I'm <laughs> staying away from short content and I find, I find that the Twitter content is some of the best as in for just for funny, stupid stuff, because I find that it like selects stuff from TikTok for you anyway. So well, I guess the TikTok algorithm is probably good It's enough. way better. Yeah. <laughs> so much so I actually have a uh, 30 minute timer on my TikTok app um, because yeah. Man, just, this is that serious. Yeah. I actually do have a timer now because it's, uh, it was eating up so much of my time over the weekend. I was just looking at some of my screen times like, how is TikTok at number one? It's just creeps in, right? 
Um, but uh, yeah, so that I thought was interesting how everyone's kind of moving towards short form. I think that's. I think Twitter's just the figuring out what to do. You know, I think they have this website. They're trying to get. Well, the, first of all, who's going to own the thing? <laughs> that's that's one. That was actually <laughs> my leeway into the conversation. <laughs> then it's like they've uh, had one more big news yeah, of this week, and of course, it's our favorite guest. <laughs> It's basically a third guest because we talk about him. Exactly, <laughs> at all times. <laughs> like Musk and Elon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, yeah, who's going to own the thing? How are they going to make revenue? Um, and now that they're trying video and it's just kind of, it's a, it's a unique website and it's going to be interesting to see how they how they evolve. But um, apparently once Elon buys it, he kind of wants to transform a few things. Isn't yeah, it? I think um, the tweet that he uh, put out was that this was a stepping stone into something more grand. Mm. So he wants to buy Twitter, understand the ins and outs, probably get uh, access to the to a lot of the, the IP and then use that to be able to almost um, evolve into something that's that one place for, for everything. So mm. I don't know, would you trust Elon Musk with a social media platform? That's a big question because he's a wild cannon. So one day you could just like log in and like every <laughs> every second letter is replaced with a troll face or something. <laughs> it's just, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, but yeah, like by the looks of things, it looks like current uh, Twitter management wasn't that great in mm. terms of security and, and quite a few other things. So, you know, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have the worst opinion if he does take it. Over. Yeah, it should be interesting. But I think if you plan to be a creator uh, and I think they have a revenue sharing model or something, I wouldn't trust that because you just don't know when they kind of, you know, make changes all of a sudden under. Are you talking about if you're a native Twitter creator? Yeah, like say for example, if you're getting paid um, as a creator, because uh, imagine they, you know, they change it up, there's interesting stuff there and they introduce like a whole career program right, right. and they start tweeting and they start getting money. And the next day you log in and it's like, oh, no, you know what? It's everything's Dogecoin. Um, <laughs> you, 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 the only way you can get the money out yeah, is, is through yeah. Dogecoin, right? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's the kind or, of thing. Or, or uh, take it out, you know, um, or use, use this credit for Tesla stores and talk, talk, talk <laughs> Tesla mar- merch. So things like that. Like, yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, even if they're a bit extreme, but, you know, Elon is known to be extreme. It's just unpredictable. Unpredictable I guess. Yeah. for sure. Um, but uh, overall, I think with, with Twitter as well, um, it's uh, the, the funny thing was when the, the leaks came out with uh, um, uh, uh, Agarwal, I think part yeah. of Agarwal. Um, and just the conversation between him and Elon Musk was just so. <laughs> Why don't, why don't you run by it to let uh, people know? Sorry? Maybe. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a long conversation, but I think basically um, Parag was trying to calm things down. Of, uh, I think it was the email or text, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think he sent, uh, this was at the height of the whole um, whole takeover, debacle, yeah. Yeah, the, the takeover where he wanted to take over and then it went to court and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think Prague was trying to calm things down, like, hey, you know what, let's kind of talk and stuff. And Elon's response was simply, so what did you get done today? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was that's such, like, that stung um, because it just felt like so personal for no reason mm-hmm. um, because it's clear that Elon doesn't rate him uh, and the, you know, quote unquote job that he has done. Um, somebody actually mentioned, I say a quote unquote a lot, apparently. So somebody oh. mentioned on the podcast that this is something Tausif says like in every episode. Right, quote unquote. <laughs> quote unquote. Like this is my thing. And um, he says this should be an inside joke within the podcast. I'm like, <laughs> I don't I didn't think that I, I say that. In fact, I say a lot of ums and ahs more than quote unquote, but right. maybe, I don't know, quote unquote's a, a thing. But anyway, going back, <laughs> he did, um, he wasn't a big, big, big fan of him, but now the, the news is coming out that um you know he he will definitely want to take over at the original price um mm. at 40 f- twitter stock was like whoosh, just went up god knows what's happening at this stage um yeah we, uh, honestly uh, given how far and, and deep we've covered it over the months and then how like, we kind of yeah. slapped in the face like oh nothing's happening yeah and then so back like in. we're not even gonna like solidify this one it's nah, just like exactly. it's just there it's just yeah it just came it's out we'll see happened. what happens <laughs> uh kind of thing if it ever comes out or not <laughs> Um, but again, just staying on the, the Elon Musk topic, he did come up, uh, come out with uh, the latest prototype of a, of a robot that was um, developed by his um, Tesla electric car company. Yeah. And uh, before we start press rec- um, record, you mentioned that you weren't too impressed by it. Yeah. Um, so 
obviously it's a big effort to be done in six months, but I just feel what they showed and what they were promising, yeah, like it could be cool, but it's we just haven't seen much from it yet. So I'm just interested to know, like, because they're promising such big things, like, you know, it will be like 20 grand or whatever and mm. they'll produce this in high volume. And I just think what kind of, you know, computer vision system that they have in there that it can recognise things in everyday houses. And they were touting that it's the first time, well, I guess that was the prototype that they were saying it was the first time it's walked unaided on, on stage. And it was kind of like like this. Wobbly, you know? yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know why they went for, a f- for like a full humanoid model. Um, you know, wheels would be more efficient. It doesn't really need to walk. Um, it's not, you know, I don't know. I, I just feel like it wasn't what I was expecting is all. Right. Um, because, you know, I, I, obviously we've seen Boston Dynamics, but they've yeah. had a, a huge head start, obviously. Mm. Obviously. It's not, and it's not, it's going to be a lot more expensive if you're going to buy one of those bots than, yes. than this one. So I can understand that, but I'm just, you know, I was expecting a little bit more. For some reason, maybe it's just my Maybe just Tesla and your mask and you're like all this yeah. kind of expecting something out of the world kind of stuff. But but yeah, he did present it on a stage. I think he calls it the Optimus. Yeah. Not a very original name to be fair. Where it waved to the audience and raised its knees. Uh, and then they showed a video of it doing, you know, simple tasks like watering plants, carrying boxes and lifting metal bars. Uh, I, I guess where it probably falls short is, as you mentioned, is just when you look at Boston D- Dynamics and the the crazy movement that it has and then compared to something like this. And as you mentioned, it'll, be, it'll cost lower than $20,000 and be available in the next three to five years. So he has some time to maybe catch up to some of those those yeah, and, and traits. It's, it's just, I feel like it would have been better if they took another six months and unveiled something a bit more. Yeah, so I think he's probably running deadlines and maybe they, and, and here's the, the thing, I think he watched your video on Google AI brain, um, Google putting an AI brain on, into a robot uh, and he was like, holy shit, things are happening. <laughs> we, I just, get Cold Fusion just dropped one of the best videos of the year. I got to put out this robot, like even though it was supposed to come out next year. <laughs> it's like, well, we, but sir, we don't Call have anything. To engineer. <laughs> so we don't have anything. It's, like, it's probably not even a robot. Some guy from the factory who wasn't like peed in six months <laughs> just trying to move around wobbly. That's what it was wobbly. <laughs> I think y'all just texting the engineers <laughs> like, yep, you're all fired. <laughs> so I'll just do it myself. Exactly. Uh, but no jokes aside, I think he's probably trying to meet some sort of deadlines where um, I think just overall presentation felt a bit kind of, yeah, like there was no kind of hype built around it and it just happened kind mm. of thing. So yeah, it, it was a bit odd just mm. the whole uh, unveiling uh, of, of of it. So yeah, I probably would have rather, I don't know, um, waited but maybe like i said he's trying to impress certain investors or, or something like yeah, that, that yeah that could be another angle as well it's like hey look look more what things are, yeah, yeah exactly more things are on the work uh, but i'm not completely opposed to tesla being the ones making it because uh, you know um they, they probably have some interesting stuff um i think it was interesting just a note um how they did say that it was the same system within the cars the self-driving cars that they were mm-hmm. using to navigate um or the robot to help the robot navigate so i don't know if that means that um, it's kind of general because obviously a road is different to a house. So um, as I found that very interesting. So I'd, I would like to know more details about that specifically. Mm. Um, going back uh, to the AI discussion, uh, so Meta announced the debut of something called Make a Video. I don't know if you saw that video, uh, uh, but it's a new artificial yeah. AI system. Uh, sorry, it's a new AI system that lets people turn text prompts into brief high quality video clips. No, so haven't you haven't? Oh. So it's basically um, Dali, but for video. I, st- I called it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think we discussed about Runway ML as well. Yeah, um, um, what's it called, th- this one? This one's called uh, Make a Video um, by Meta. Um, and um, yeah, so, so basically Meta AI uh, offers greater compositional control for images based on prompts. And um, the, the ethos they have is that it's not enough for an AI system to just generate content. Users should be able to shape and control the content the system generates. Um, the generator is not available for public use yet, um, but a white paper study on the research um, says that. Have you, have you seen any of this? Yeah. I haven't. So this is a live reaction here. Um, this is better than I thought it was going to be. Exactly. Obviously these are hand, hand selected um, the, the the best ones out yeah, there. But, yeah, but but uh, look at that. Yeah, um, 
I'm quite impressed. If this is the, the this is probably the first proper video generator. <laughs> AI video generator. Where is the so. raccoon on the moon, man? Right? <laughs> you can't coming. sell me if it's not, yeah. But okay, but yeah, this is obviously, this is year zero of this mm. one. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Have you seen Google Imagine? Yeah, but that's just images, right? They're, they're also coming up with a video version as well. Just to comp- compete with that, yeah. so it's it's uh, it's on. It, it's it's on. on. But see, like already, I'm starting to see like, hey, I could use this for like a YouTube video. Not yeah. not the, at this stage, but it's like if I just want a scene, I could just type it in. A use case of a dog uh, eating um, an ice cream uh, by the beach. Why what, why, w- why is it always such? <laughs> such, such it's, it, that's oh, interesting. I, well, I think I know why because it's like, oh, you know, the AI must be creating something original because it's. There's no stock footage of a dog eating an ice cream or whatever. Yeah, and I think um, when, for example, when you're told to think of opposites, like we think, okay, like say, okay, uh, create like a video based on a prompt. Um, you wouldn't say, oh, two guys sitting talking about something on a podcast, right? Because because that's normal. Mm-hmm. You probably have oh, two guys sitting wearing, oh, yeah, yeah, in the moon uh, eating ice cream while they're wearing wizard robes or something like mm-hmm. you know something that's drastically different from reality. But generally, the like the the opposite of what we think is reality is is very much close to what everybody thinks that reality, like the opposite reality is. So we've got the reality right now, and then you're told to think about something completely 180. The realms of where that 180 lands generally lands around those ideas in the same area of of the moon, of (laughs) raccoons and people, astronauts riding horses. I think there's another aspect as well where it's like it's entertaining to see that thought come back to you like in in a visual sense so it's like oh this is just some random thing i've thought about and then when you see it like oh that's interesting that's exactly know, it's like a little bit of excitement for that yeah and, and 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 i think that's that's the thing as well and um when people are working with me journey when it first kind of came out on, the, on its beta format a lot of it was again kind of just flipping the the narrative right so for example i don't know michael jordan playing baseball that actually happened yeah. <laughs> but he, he, he had a very successful career it was very baseball. very successful pivot <laughs> from uh, uh basketball but but something like michael jordan wearing a suit playing cricket mm. like that's unlikely but it's not too unlikely right. so things like that also kind of started propping I, up i saw um this was dali mini though but it was like the queen and uh ll cool j <laughs> in a under underground tavern playing like axe throwing but the funny thing was <laughs> for one of them, it put like LL Cool J in like with the white hair with the queen's <laughs> hat. <laughs> it looks so funny. I was like, oh, well played. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, let's, let's do that. Um, but yeah. Um, I was going to make a joke. At least they didn't make the queen black. <laughs> Well, but the thing was, was it LL Cool J or was that a black queen? I don't know. Anyway, um, so, so <laughs> <laughs> this part of, I think. but yeah, so this, this meta, you know, this meta thing, I think it's interesting because, um, it's funny that they were the first to the punch because they haven't really been in this AI image generation space at all. It's like being Google open AI and oh, I third party players meta's just mm. kind of been sitting there, but now they've come up with a video one, which is like above everyone else. So it'll be interesting to see how they, or do they have any plans to integrate this into any services or? Yeah, so there's gonna be, I think the idea is for public use. So they want people to have control of, like but I said. You know how yeah. dangerous that is. Like yeah, obviously they're gonna, you know, the same thing as um, OpenAI's DALI where they try and censor certain things, but I don't know. If yeah, I think they'll have certain um, maybe watermarks or usage, you know, criteria where you can only use in, in certain ways and formats. So maybe that's how they'll, they'll control the like, stuff. Like, okay, here, here's something. Um, you would say that a lot of people would love to get their hands on this and use it in an experiment, right? You would say that. Yeah. So what if they only put this in the metaverse? So you have to like go <laughs> buy an Oculus and go, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, but. no, no, no. But, but, but that's how you entice people, you know, into yeah. newer platforms is you give them something that's not available um, for the for you know in, in other areas, so I wouldn't be too surprised to be honest. Be, I think um, that would be a bad move. But also, I will, on, on a side note, I've heard that a lot of the top management of like the metaverse projects are leaving, so it's not yeah, a good um, sign. Tim Cook, uh, CEO of Apple, also um, 
had something to say. <laughs> left <laughs> to the secret, secret uh, exec of, of Meta, uh, Meta's metaverse. But no, he made some comments about metaverses, like where um, I think I read something along the lines of that uh, people don't really understand what the metaverse is well, and they're we, far, we far away. Do, I think so. When the metaverse was hype was huge, like people were like make a video on the metaverse, make a video on the metaverse, and I was like. It, the concept of what it is hasn't really changed. It's still as nebulous as it was before, but it's just because Meta changed their name mm. that everyone's like, this is going to be the next big thing. But it's like nothing changed. Mm. There, there was no new technology breakthrough or new interface or whatever that made it so much more viable than it was just before the announcement. So but it was the first time a lot of people are hearing it. About, it is true, yeah. but it's... Like for the 80%, I would say this was the first time they're hearing about what Metaverse was mm. because of Facebook's introduction. But, but yeah, I guess there was a hype, but there was nothing there. Like it's, yeah, it's almost exactly. like, yeah. Um, when we, and then when it was finally revealed, everyone's like, this looks like- Like the zoom <laughs> on 3D. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, the reason why I bring up Tim, Tim Cook's um, point was because, you know, he is an influential person in the tech world. So mm -hmm. him, saying things like that does have an impact on the, the confidence yeah. and the sentiment of, you know, investors, people and other stakeholders and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. But I, in saying that, I'm not saying the metaverse is never going to be a thing. It's just, um, it, it's going to take a bit more time before there's like one company that does it so right that it's almost irresistible for people not to have a look and explore yeah. that. Um, yeah, so I think we're still a fair bit away because we need it's the still hardware. We need, you know, yeah, like the, the integration of AR VR where it's seamless is still not there. Um, there's some kind of encouraging products that does a little bit of it, but in mass, we're far away from it because. I don't, sorry, I, I don't know if you saw MKBHD's video of the haptic gloves. I haven't seen that yet. No, okay. but it was on my watch later. <laughs> Well, yeah, so, so he did do a video about, or it was, I think it was just cool tech in general. And one of the things was um, some gloves that you put on and it kind of has actuators that basically stop where, stop where the, the object that you're holding would be. And so he, there was examples of him using like a drill and you could feel the vibrations of mm. the drill and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, that, that's cool. Um, but, you know, the gloves are chunky and it's exactly. God, God knows how much they cost. I was going to say like that, like, Transformation from real world to metaverse, you have to, you know, wear gloves, wear goggles. I think that's a barrier to entry. Um, when the barrier is going to be seamless is when you'll start seeing more adoption mm -hmm. because uh, friction, people hate, people yeah. want convenience. Um, people Unless you're want a famous. diehard, like, you know, first exactly. edition. Which is not what know. they're trying to do. It's, it's not going to be a niche product. They are not making the metaverse for niche. They're making it for mass. Mm -hmm. And for mass, you need as minimal friction as possible. Right now, that's not the case. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably see. I think I think what's needed, and everyone probably would understand where I'm going with this. But like you know, Apple, Apple just has to step in <laughs> with their product. You know, we're not, we're not Apple fanboys. I'm just saying you like. No, if no, they, I agree. Yeah, they they AR VR headset, and they do things right. Like they do do it the Apple way, and everyone it's just a light bulb moment and everyone understands how this thing works, then- And then you'll have the, the conversation about uh, how Apple, <laughs> yeah, Apple copied everyone yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, and that, that, then the floodgates would open and then the software can follow, so. Oh, for sure. Uh, but just on, on copying things, you see the, the Pixel announcement. And you, and you were right about the watch with the bezels. <laughs> Massive. I, I, just kept of, 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 I just kept thinking of you when that was when they were talking about it, and I was like, "Oh it's yeah, okay, huge, it's right. huge." But look, I, 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 and it's it's a little bit on the expensive end. So, I don't, so it's for the those, most, isn't it the most expensive base model smartwatch? Uh, the it's three. definitely on the higher end. Yeah, so like, it's more expensive yeah. than in some of the Apple watches yeah. for sure. So for those who don't know, the the Google event happened this week where they released uh, the Pixel Seven, Pixel Seven Pro and Google Watch and also a tablet, I think. Uh, and, you know, the 7, 7 Pro, and it's a funny thing, I don't know if you saw the MQB's video, he did a really yeah, cool yeah, intro, yeah, yeah. it's so funny. But uh, just even if you saw it as well, where the, the you know, the presenter was saying, oh, you know, we, we take pride when other people copy us. And then a few minutes later. And a few minutes later, <laughs> oh, we're introducing the cinematic blur. It's like a brand new thing. But it's just on Apple, right? It's, it's crazy how these tech companies just, yeah. Shamelessly do the stuff, and and <clears throat> I think this is where a lot of the diehards of both extreme ends of these products go go crazy and mm -hmm. be like, oh, I think that's that's dying down a bit now. A little bit, you reckon? Like, yeah, I think so because it's not like I don't really see um, people like over the launch video or anything. People like really hounding at each other. It's kind of yeah. like, oh, this was disappointing, or all oh, the enthusiasm of the presentation wasn't that great. But it's not 
Not really. Do you think it's because people are maturing or just tech in general doesn't have that stronghold into people's... I just think the tech is getting so good that most features are on every phone. Right. It's like, you know, every phone probably has an ultra wide and... Exactly. So it's, it's kind of like, it's getting to that point where it's like the 80-20 rule, where it's like, you know, 80% of the effort for like 20% of the mm. um, increase in performance or whatever. So it's like, we're at that stage where everything's just good. Yeah. So it's like not really a, a reason to like hound Apple for not having copy and paste or like yeah. a, a video recording camera. <laughs> it's like yeah. we're past that stage now. So I agree. And yeah. and I think also overall the the sentiment of it is like, it's just there. So who copied whom is just pointless because having this debate for almost 10, 15 years mm. now. And uh, it just doesn't matter as long as you, because when people get the phone and it's got everything, people don't care about, you know, how it got here yeah. or, or who copied whom like 15 years ago. It's just, yeah. oh, I've got a yeah. nice phone. I pay a reasonable price for it, for this phone and I get everything that I want. Mm. So so there's that. But having said that, I um, have been following the, the Pixel Watch uh, intently because I've been trying to upgrade from my, from my Fitbit. And, you know, Fitbit was acquired by um, Google a year or so ago. Um, and, and that's what I knew, you know, they're gonna get, get into the watch mm. uh, world. Upon reveal, it does feel like the watch is like a Fitbit Pro Max, uh, <laughs> not like a Google Watch per se. I think it's got right. a Google Watch interface. Like I think Wear OS is going to be uh, introduced in it. But the idea of it still using Fitbit's health stuff is, is a little bit kind of... Uh, I don't want to say disappointing. <laughs> Cheapo. Like you're expecting like a custom. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Like, like I would have thought that, okay, like they've acquired Fitbit and they use their technology to have something that's completely, you know, mm. fresh and new, but yeah, it wasn't the case. And and one other thing that everyone's a bit worried about is they said, oh, the battery runs up, up to, to 24 hours. And usually when you say up to, it's on the lower end of that up mm. to. So if you have to charge like twice a day, that's mm. not a good look, you know, for a watch that you have to put on every, every day of the mm. week. So things like that are kind of putting me off. Like, do I want to spend like five hundred plus dollars on? I, I guess you can just have a have a look at it when it comes. Yeah, it comes to you know a store, JB Hi-Fi or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, a retail store for those. Um, and, and LT is also not available on Optus. Uh, right. Only on Telstra. Okay. So I don't know how that's going to work out uh, for Australian users. Yeah. Um, you know. You know. I'm not a huge. <laughs> smartwatch person I don't have one so I can't really comment too much on it but like yeah you're just gonna this is where again when I look at the ultra the Apple watch ultra it's just so nice and, and so isn't it chunky though like it's <sighs> it is ch I like chunky watch to okay. be fair um, but just the just what it, it can do is just incredible and it's only like what $400 extra on top and you're getting like 10 times the more features and, and stuff like that. So $400 extra. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. When you want to put it like that, it is a, yeah. it is a bit a thing. Just, just finishing up on the Google event, like there's some things that I was like, oh, wow, um, that's not very good. Um, so the tablet, like for example, like it just seemed, it just seemed to be like this low end just because i you know all the leaks were like swirling around and people were like oh yeah this this could challenge the ipad etc blah, blah blah but yeah i think um mkb just touched on that is that where they're they were pretty clear in the launch that even the the subtle kind of um decisions around the tablet shows everything that this is not for i you know competing against yeah, iPad yeah, yeah. or the high-end Samsung um, tablets, right? It's just a sit at home. Exactly. Kind of, yeah. uh, it's just stuff that, it, you know, it's something that just does the regular stuff every day. Um, and I think they kind of uh, really send that point home when they have that Nest speaker thing where it attaches to that, mm -hmm. that speaker. Um, that's like the perfect uh, way of saying this is just for your home. You yeah. just lift it up you know, play around some songs or watch a recipe or something like that. Mm. Use it as white noise machine for your kids. <laughs> um, yeah. Things like that. I think it's like a family kind of stuff. And even the choice of colors, like they have only in white and that, that um, green thing, okay. which isn't uh, this, this is, sorry. Uh, when and you're saying the colors, this just came to me. Like as I was watching the presentation, this may sound super weird, but I have a feeling that in terms of design language, in terms of, fashion, co like colors and everything. We're, we're kind of entering the seventies again. I don't know if you feel that. I've all. already been there for, for a while. Okay. We've been, like if you look at the types of music, 
what the the trending fashion stuff. I'm not, I'm not talking about high end Balenciaga mm. the runways. I'm talking about what's available day to day in mass. Um, mm. You know your, your targets and Kmart's and yada yada, and overall design aesthetics as well. Mm. So graphic design, mm. we've been uh, in that zone. I would say for the last two three years already, okay. and I think we're slowly moving out of it. I think we're probably moving out of it. That would have been quick because I, I do remember like I was seeing, I, I saw like women dressing in like those flares, you know, with the, yeah. the, like just straight up with, the, yeah, with yeah. the flowers and everything. Like that was a couple of years ago. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Didn't think much of it. But then when I'm when I'm seeing these colors that Google's releasing the, the greens and the browns and um, just the presentation, I think, I don't, I don't know if we've left it. Like that's still- Yeah, no, we haven't left it, but I think we're slowly- phasing it out to an, mm. to a point uh like i'm talking about in general obviously mm. google's presentation has some of those those colors as as a as an accent mm. but if you look at um you know the type of music for example like say we weekend or, or harry styles or even john mayer coming up with the sob rock album which is like a full on ode to the mm. 80s right um those choices i think are 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 quite visible and have been around for like a couple of years now mm. um uh, i so you know the book Ready Player One? Oh, yes. So when I first read that, I kind of had a prediction in my mind. I was like, I think in the future, instead of there being like an overarching trend of like, okay, this is what everyone's wearing now, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get to a point where there's just like, it's split and everyone's doing everything, every era at the same time. Like not, not even individual, there'll just be pockets of stuff. Yeah. Like, and it'll just be like, we'll, we'll have, you know, the nineties, the seventies, the eighties and whatever. And it's just like all concurrent, all little pockets of it at the same time. And I was like, that's just how it's going to be. Cause and it's just, I think you're right. It's yeah. already almost like that because you know, the, the, the girl who's probably wearing those, um, those flared pants, yeah. uh, Flora printed, it's probably still doing that mm. and has a circle that, that does and, similar And then you stuff. have like straight cut, like mom jeans as well. Yeah. Like, and so then you'd have like, you know, uh, guys who still wear death metal band shirts and they have to go to those underground concerts mm. and, and others were doing the same thing with long hair. So I, I guess the only thing that died out was the hipster trend. <laughs> Give that oh another yeah, five the, years, the beard and the, the man bun, the man yeah. bun's gone. Oh, uh, I think I've seen a couple yeah. recently, but, but compared to when a, a year five ago. years ago, at least I think yeah, man bun's like five years ago, at least. Right. Interesting. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was a very big departure, but I uh, just, I, I, I kind of love that stuff. Like, um, you know, just, uh, why humans collectively decide to go down a certain part mm. and why at this time. And interestingly enough, economically we're entering what happened in the seventies as well. So high inflation, very anemic growth. That's, mm. that's the same. It's called stagflation. It was coined in that point um, in the seventies. So I don't know, maybe I, I also have a theory that economies dictate everything else. Like it starts from there. Like Interesting. In terms of birth rates, in terms of music, mood, everything. It's just, yeah. The, and that was at the height of Cold so War, wasn't it? No, no, no. 72 to 70. So after, after the. Well, Cold War and like 89, I guess. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was Cold War still happening, but this was the Vietnam War peak, I guess. Right. So yeah, like 70, 72 to 78 or something. I think that was this stagflation. It's really interesting how social media plays into, into, mm. into Everything this. is accelerated. That's, exactly. what, that's what happens, yeah. Uh, which also means it, it, it will probably decelerate just as quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I just, as I said, I just love that stuff. Yeah. So we're a big departure. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, and uh, I guess just on the Google note, uh, they killed the Stadia. Yeah, I <laughs> saw that and I was like, um, it's typical of Google. Like, oh, I also read this other thing uh, just about kind of on this topic of why Google makes so many products. Oh, you're seeing the same thing? I've or? seen the headline. Okay. Why Google makes so many products and kills them. And it's because the workplace culture promotes um you know, big ideas and starting them. Um, so you can get promoted by doing that. But in terms of maintaining maintaining them or anything, you don't get any recognition Support. for it. Right. So it's just like the more things you start, the better it is, the more you're going to get chance of getting a, a promotion. So it's like people start all these things, but don't continue. Just don't finish it. The, it. Like big hype. Are they release, hiring? And then <laughs> <laughs> it's only everything I do in my life. <laughs> 10 different projects. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully you continue them. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so so like yeah, big hype, big release, and then it just drops off, and you know you can notice that. And um, 
I guess that was just from a couple of employees and then there was a counterpoint saying it wasn't like that in my experience at Google. So I don't know how universal this is, but at least to some degree this happened. I, and you know why that happens? So uh, from, from what I heard, the culture used to be that four days work and then the fifth day they is to themselves working on a project that they've started. I think that was what I heard anyway uh, from, from Google employees. And the idea why I think they encourage people to do that, the more ideas that come up, within like internal, um, almost like a, what's, what's the word? Accelerator. Uh, accelerator programs mm -hmm. that basically they have full uh, IP to because that's the contract you sign when yeah. you work for Google. That just is, is a hub in, it, in and of mm -hmm. itself where it's an idea generator and the best ones Google can handpick Gmail. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, what other ones I can't think of right now, maps. but maps, uh, those things where, you know, Words out of of these these uh, brainstorms done by by individuals within Google, and then Google just holds the full right to it. Imagine if the guy who started Gmail started by himself mm -hmm. and then sells it, sold it to Google, probably like you know a billionaire by now mm -hmm. to be fair. Um, but of course, you know the support system that Google has probably helps him realize that that stuff. And I don't know if there's an internal structure where they mm -hmm. get some cut of 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 these projects, but that's why they do that because mm -hmm. more ideas probability of getting you know mm -hmm. ping a needle out of the haystack is, is higher mm -hmm. and um, therefore that's that's the culture yeah yeah so uh, i guess more probability to, to have that moonshot project that's huge exactly. but then also lots of waste <laughs> lots of waste and that's what we see <laughs> yeah. through like okay this sounds like a eight out of ten seven out of ten mm -hmm. let's kind of go ahead and see where it where it lands and then when the seven out of ten kind of slowly falls to five or six that's when they're like, time to go. And I think Stadia yeah, was, was they, one they, of them. I was looking, like, I was like, this is pretty cool. Like having like streaming, obviously annoyed that Australian internet can't handle it. So we, we didn't get it over here. But, you know, if your internet could handle it, just being able to play AAA titles anywhere, that's a good idea. Yeah. I think that's, that's yeah. And uh, the the sad thing was they only launched it three years, two, two three years ago, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, yeah, I think um, the concept was strong. Mm. But the execution and just just running it was was something that, that they couldn't do. So, um, but they did go all in on it. I remember when when they first released it, there was so much hype around it because, as you mentioned, the concept was such a such a cool thing. But they didn't have any originals in the platform. That they they're also kind of working with other partners in general to facilitate this this platform. But yeah, I don't know. Um, if this concept will still take off. Uh, and if it does, I wonder why they would kill it instead of not just keeping it on the, on the mm. down low. That, do you know, do you have any info on what exactly their reasoning was? Or was I it think just uh, it, it's, it's mostly, so from those that I have here, um, it's, it's mostly to keep things afloat with internally. I think just, Cost wise, that have to be the reason. Well, they see the share price like, share falling, price, yeah. and they're like, "Hey, we got to cut the excess." And the worst part is the employees weren't aware that they were gonna. They found it through a blog post that came out that you know things were falling apart and such yeah, it's typical worst, corporate. Yeah. It's the worst way to do that. I yeah, think. so it's it's like um, yeah, so uh, like they weren't able to reach out directly to share the news with the employees, and they found out at the same time the the blog was released. Um, but overall, it, it does. Uh, pose the question as to if cloud gaming will be something we see in the future because concept wise, it just makes sense mm. uh, with high internet, having a good screen at home, um, you just get to play any games with anyone in the world mm. anytime. That's such a, and you pay a I, monthly subscription. I, I, look, the, the way I see it, I, I doubt that in the future with all the technology coming, it's, it's, it's just feasible now. Like I don't see why it wouldn't happen. Like, you know, obviously there's like physics limitations of the speed of light over uh, over that a vast distance from your server to where you're playing. And, you know, maybe that would relay uh, like a five millisecond delay or something. But, you know, for the casual gamer, they don't really care, care about, about that. Stuff. So, you know, um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't happen. So. All right. So that just about ends it for today. So thanks for watching and uh, listening and we'll see you again soon for the next episode. Cheers.